Okay, here's a uh, Kodak Retina 1, a type 010 or 010, a post war camera. Uh, this one's come to me for servicing, so I'm just having a quick look over it to see what I can see. There's a screw missing here and two screws missing there. Now the screws in that position uh, would have held an accessory shoe or well, failing that they would have just been two round headed screws filling up those slots. I'm having a quick look over the camera to see what sort of condition it's in. The lens looks pretty hazy and dirty but that might just be 50 years worth of fingerprints on the front. We'll wait and see. The focus moves comparatively smoothly. That's unusual. Usually they're well bunged up. There's this nameplate missing here. Now that would have had Kodak on it and it also would have had a dot symbol on it which has been represented here by a black line which you set your shutter speeds against. This is one of the uh, not one of the earliest of the o 010s because they had their focus infinity position the little knob here actually finished up around here in the body so this is slightly later I'm looking at the lens and it's not it's an uncoated Zenar so it's an uncoated lens Compor rapid shutter that's all normal here I'm looking at the depth of field tables and the depth of field scale is clearly written in German so this would have been one made for the domestic German market focus scale is in meters it's made in Germany, it says made in Germany clearly on the top that's an odd thing for them to do for their domestic market but perhaps they did it to all of them so have a quick look what more can I see in here it was repaired by AM Pro Camera Washington and who knows how long ago that was right so I'm just going to check the functions see what I can see shutter Cox what's that Spe speed set to about a 25th roller sprocket it fires sounds good let's see what it's like on a slower speed let's try if that mark is correct let's try a tenth that sounds good too so basically the shutter is quite good viewfinder is a bit dirty film advance certainly works it uh, all looks good so it should be a straightforward strip and clean down reassemble and uh, find a nameplate for it I suspect I have one um, so we'll, we'll find out all right starting at the top let's see if I can get the advanced knob off so you have to put a spanner in there to hold that No, that knob will not turn. That's going to take some uh, extra gear to get that to shift. So I'll have to go and find it. This is what I was after. A hose clip. And got a piece of leather here which can go around the advanced knob. The hose clip goes over the top. It's always easier when I'm not trying to do it on camera. Let's get that round to there. Tighten that up. Alright, so this is left hand threaded. I've got to turn that clockwise that's it that was all that was needed just enough to break that loose now I can take that clamp off 
You've got to be careful with these. Those sharp edges will dig into your chrome top plate if you're not careful. Right, that was the hard work. That should come undone with the fingers, and it does. That thing. Let's get a pair of pliers onto that and remove that. that. These tips are easily damaged and very easily lost. I used a pair of pliers there that I've modified for doing a completely different job. But they work well on it. Right. There's only one screw left holding this top on because the other one is already missing. Yeah. I cock the shutter, wind the sprocket forward with my finger, with my thumb rather, so that it, it's cocked. To press the shutter down as far as it will go, I should be able to lift the top plate, top cover back off it. Here we have it. All you have to do is get, get it off past the rewind button on the back. Alright, there's our frame counter with its spring. It's a two-piece construction. Uh, quite a good degree of friction between the two parts. But I usually put a little bit of lubricant in there after I've cleaned it. It doesn't need to move freely by any means. It should be a good deal of friction. That's what you use to set the uh, to set your frame counter. Now what do we got here? So the shutter release should lift out. It does. Not much to see there. There's a washer on the top there. That's a bit unusual. So unusual, I'm not sure it really came from there. And next, if I find the right tools, here it is in front of me, we'll remove this. That could be tight, so again I'll use my spanner in here to make sure that that doesn't force anything. Is it going on there? Yes it is. Again, that's, oh, it's, it's only loose. It's not even finger tight. That can come off. Alright. Here's the rewind lever. Now here, this single screw holds this cog in place. Now this rotates with the sprocket. The film sprocket rotates here, it rotates this wheel in turn. And this wheel has a cam on it and there's a cutout in the cam. When that, that cutout controls the position of this lever here. It should be a single screw holding this. I'll look closely at this part because I suspect that stray washer came from here. Let's check the position. There's my screw. There's the top lever. There's the lever underneath it. Oh no, that washer I was suspecting was actually there, so that washer was probably intended. There's the, another lever, and then the washer at the base that serves as a spacer. There are two springs here and here. Let's lift that, that double ratchet tooth cog there, that uh, just lifts off, that's just loose. Right, these two springs and their screws look much the same. The screws really are interchangeable. The springs look much the same at first glance, but they aren't. There's the two springs. So this one, for the, from the front of the camera, This one from the back of the camera. Three screws here.
this camera is unusual to a certain extent very often screws are loose in old cameras they just loosen up over time so there's the two components nothing exciting there nowhere to be seen even relatively clean they will only need a light clean and be lubricated and put back here's our take up spool that's a Bakelite type plastic, a thermo setting plastic uh, there remains of some dried up old grease on the base so that can be cleaned and goes back now yeah, the rewind knob I just put a screwdriver through the fork and that just turns off with your fingers not a problem two screws those screws out it's a bit reluctant to pop out of there now there's something a bit unusual about that bracket it's uh, not the normal one I'm used to seeing. Now there must be a spring inside it that catches in that point there. Will it lift out through the top? No. Or the bottom. That I think I will clean. I won't try and disassemble it. I'll just clean that add some lubricant and pop it back there must be a groove inside the outer part with a spring set inside it which drops into this groove or that groove depending on whether the knob is raised or lowered that's a bit unusual that's probably something that was done for a very short period of time because I don't remember striking that Here's the chrome plate from the top. It's got a bit of a bend on it. Um, I'm not sure what's happened to that. I'll straighten that out slightly. It was probably bent so that this would hold it down firmly given that it doesn't have the two screws there which would have otherwise kept it neatly in place. So that's the top of the body disassembled. There wasn't an awful lot to it. On the base of the camera find the right screwdriver a depth of field scale is held with two screws so we have what components we got here there's a spring there which is gummed up the grease has dried out, you can see a bit of corrosion there and a steel plate it might be brass plate actually which sits on top of the leather that's all that's required to come off from the bottom apart from the leather itself the leather I'll peel back only because I need to get to the screw for the hinge pin and for this other screw which holds the bellows struts in place Next I'll remove the shutter, shutter and lens assembly. So there's my tool, the Belgian tool, the one you can't get anymore. Particularly good for this job. That's the retaining ring. It's uh, in quite good condition, often they're a bit scared. Alright, there's a little washer's popped out there. Now, I know what that washer's for. That washer is a spacer. And it fits on the same shaft as the shutter release. 
and it just means that the shutter release moves that mechanism just that little bit further. Some cameras will have that spacer, others will not. Um, if it was supposed to be there and you lose it, which is very easily done, because if you don't know, know it, if you don't know it's there, you tend to miss it. It drops out when you're not watching. Then it's going to cause you a bother trying to get everything to work later on. Right. I think uh, I'll pop the shutter to one side. We'll deal with that separately. I noticed that the lens at the front is quite loose. The one at the back, that's only not even finger tight either, so they'll be easy to deal with. Sometimes you have to get a bit a bit creative to get those loose. Now what have I got? Where's my scalpel for lifting off that leather? Sorry about the noise, the toolbox is right behind the camera. Okay. Right, there's nothing here to hold that leather on apart from glue. So with I'm very careful, we'll get this leather off neatly and in one piece with some other models and I'm thinking here particularly of the Retina 1A and 2A the boss at the, this end of the body has actually been fitted after the leather, on top of the leather of course it's effectively riveted on so you can't get it off so you don't normally remove the leather entire on a Retina 1A or 2A camera but on this model I will and the reason I'll do it even though I don't need to get any further down than here is that if you lift the leather off completely it's very easy to glue it back down again without there being any obvious sign that you've done it Whereas if it's only lifted up and then glued down, you often end up with a slight line across at that point. We don't want any slight lines, so we'll get this thing off neatly in one piece. There we go. So what do we have here? To get, take the door off the front, the hinge pin screw from the base, carefully putting that aside so I know exactly where it goes, not really, I'm just throwing it in one container, another one at the top. Yeah, I'm just looking at the door. Present here are little paper washers. They're just thick cartridge paper really. And they're just a washer. They provide a little bit of friction, controlled friction at that point. Now, yeah, to get this off here, basically I'm going to push up against the spring on the bottom and lift it over off that groove. Well that's the idea, let's see if I can actually do it. Yes, there we go. Now I'll carefully pop those washers to one side because otherwise I'll have to make them and I don't like making them, it's very time consuming. So there we have it, that's off. We're down to the focus. Now the focus on this one moves comparative, oh, it's fairly stiff but it's nothing like a bad one some of them don't move at all so I'm just checking here to see if there are any, any marks on the ring that other repairers have put there in the past if they've had cause to disassemble this and at the infinity position which is up back against that stop I'm going to put a couple of lines in from the outer ring to that middle brass section, I'm putting two scratch lines in there and one at the top across from there. So I know that when this brass ring is at the infinity position it lines up there. So four screws to come off there
Kodak experimented with a few slight details of manufacture at various times and these screws here are sort of a cheese head screw they're flat on their base and they lock in against a groove the flat base of the groove which is machined in here uh, that requires a bit of extra work with the later cameras that was just a bevel and they were just what you might call flathead screws or countersunk screws that locked in against it. This method is actually better and they went back to it when they made the Retina 2C and 3C models. Okay, so much for that. Now, what do I want? I want that screwdriver. There are four screws that hold the bellows on. They hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Black screws I'll loosen those and that's the bellows just peeling off the back there, I felt them go there are six countersunk screws sometimes called flathead screws depending on where you are in the world There's the last of them. That one. Now if you carefully mark the focus scale ring against this before you disassemble anything, it'll go back in the same position. If you disturb nothing and the focus was accurate before, it'll be accurate when you put it back together. Right. So here's the inner and outer helical. And what I'll normally do now is I revolve those down until they are level. When they're level, I can put my mark in there in line with my other two marks. That one's inconveniently placed right there, where we'll just pop it just like that. And then I know to reassemble those rings to those lines at that handy reference point when those two surfaces are flat. Those bits are very scungy with old grease and will need to be cleaned. Back to the camera body. I've got four countersunk head screws here, larger ones, and they hold this focus assembly onto the front of the front of the uh, the front standard here. There we have it. So we've got our four screws that held it to the bellows. We'll just knock those out. Put them aside so I don't lose them. There's two of them. What have I done with the other two? I've already dropped them out. Okay. Here they are. So again you can see all the old grease and rubbish here. All of that's got to be cleaned up. Um, sometimes it's hard to move that. That's not a bad example by any means. And what have we got left here to do now? Well, we've got the bellows. To remove the struts rather, the bellows we stay in them. Very rarely do you have to tackle anything to do with taking the bellows out. Single screw at the top. There'll be a single screw at the bottom too, and that will be hiding underneath the remains of the leather here, right there it is. It doesn't want to come loose. A touch of solvent might help. That's been under the leather and the glue is, they very generously glued that in place so that glue has run in there and uh, caused that to, excuse me, 
Right. So, a bit of shock treatment here. I'm just going to use a hammer and a screwdriver to, as you would in uh, like an impact driver. So I just have to twist this. We'll provide some. While I tap it, I'm providing a bit of twist on that here, it's just going loose, no problem at all. A couple of light taps is usually enough. They're not big screws of course, they're only about 2, two millimetres, slightly bigger, 2.5 maybe. Alright, so that's those two screws. There are two in the body, at the end there, which may or may not be tight. No, nope, that one's loose. And interestingly, they are chrome finish and they have a raised head and they will probably be a good match for that position. No, not quite. That's a shame. That would have been very convenient. Because I'll need it three chrome screws for that top cover and chrome screws that are not corroded or damaged or otherwise ugly are hard to find right so the struts can come out and I'll check those to make sure that they are undamaged that none of the struts are bent and I'll push them back into shape if necessary there's a washer there and there should be one at the top, yes, there it was. So those two spacer washers sit here and here between this bracket and the casing. And that is it, as far as the body is concerned. Oh, I could show you the, uh, the top cover. The top cover, there's virtually nothing in here, there's this cover plate which covers the viewfinder components. Now there's just a piece of glass for the front, a lens there, a, a small lens at the back and this black spring here which holds them in position. Taking those, that you can take them out of the body and clean them, it's just awkward to put them back. This one's quite dirty so I will take them out and clean them. If it, they'd been a bit cleaner I would choose to just clean those pieces of glass in position rather than fight with them, but uh, fighting is what I shall do. I'll just lift that out, there we have it, front piece. The rear piece, the rear piece is very fine. It, this piece of glass is flat on one face and convex on the other. The convex side is on the goes inwards, goes to the front. The flat side goes to the rear. That's it. I'll clean those parts and put them back together.